Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ivy if you are new here. Today we are going to be doing a, another true crime video. We are going to be talking about the string of black transgender women killed in Dallas, Texas. Um, I quickly want to say, if you did not see my last video, which I will have linked it below, my true crime content is going to be mainly about black lives or LGBT lives. I also do want to say that I don't mean disrespect to anyone in this case. So if I say anything that comes off as harsh or disrespectful, I do not mean it in that way, but I do know that you know, you can say things and people have their right to interpret it however they want. And just because you don't find your word, words hurtful doesn't mean that other people don't. So, um, with that being said, I'm just going to get right into it. Our story starts in 2015 on July 29th. There was a body found in a field between Harry Hines Boulevard and Stemmings Freeway. The body was very, very badly decomposed. Obviously, Texas heat in July, it was around 100 degrees at the time, so the body was decomposing very, very fast, and the only identifying marks were a few faded tattoos. She had a heart with the name Willie inside of it tattooed on her shoulder, and she had the name Shade tattooed on her right calf. The body was found in a blue and white tank top, blue shorts, with a black wig on and sunglasses. It also had pink acrylic nails with rhinestones on them. So this was originally not written up as a hate crime. It actually was never written up as a hate crime, but I will get into why that is a little bit later. But it was not even looked at as a crime towards transgenders because it was written up originally as a male victim. And the reason why I want to add this is because the number of transgenders killed every year is most likely higher than what it actually is due to them either not getting reported at all or that them getting reported under the wrong gender which will you, you will definitely see a pattern in a lot of these victims but her body was so badly decomposed that it actually took two weeks for them to identify her and they did identify her as her birth given name and um, her friends and her family came forward and said that she identified as a woman, she was a woman, and she went by the name Shade Schooler. She was the 13th transgender woman killed of that year, which already surpassed the number killed in 2014, and 11 out of those 13 women were all black women. So then jumping a little bit ahead of t into 2017, an unidentified transgender woman was found in a field. There is very, very little information on this case and it actually led to four other murders of transgender women being opened in Dallas because of this one. But like I said, there's not a lot of information on this. Honestly, do just us the fact that the victim was never identified. So then on May 12th of 2018, another black transgender woman had been found. This one really shook up the community because only three days before this, another black transgender woman had been found. It was ruled that they didn't have a connection to any of these murders. She was strangled and it was apparently the aftermath of an altercation that had happened because of a robbery, but I didn't look that much into it just because it didn't have to do with this case. The body was found in White Rock Creek by a kayaker and it was wearing a black shirt and scrub pants. The body was eventually identified as 39 year old Nicole Hall she was another one who was originally written up under the wrong gender so again this case was not originally looked at as a crime towards transgender women nicole was described as a really caring and compassionate person everybody loved her her friends described her as just one of those people that everyone had wanted to know and everyone wanted to be around she was a very happy person she loved to sing she was also very very active in the transgender community and was trying to do everything that she could to kind of pave the way for other transgender women of color after her. So they actually didn't even have enough information to rule this as a homicide. It was classified as an unexplained death. Her body was pretty badly decomposed. It was written up as an unexplained death, but there were signs of homicidal violence. Similar to the unidentified woman and Shade Scholar, no one has been charged in this crime. I believe they don't have any suspects in this crime. They pretty much have nothing. So then on April 13th of 2019, another transgender woman had been attacked. She had been brutally stabbed, but very, very fortunately, she did survive and provided 
a brief description to the police of what her attacker looked like. So then on May 18th of that same year, so May 18th of last year, another transgender woman had been found, 22-year-old Malaysia Brooker. She had been found shot to death, left in her car. Her case was one of the first ones that started really bringing attention to the violence against black trans women not only in the city of dallas but all around the world largely because five weeks before she was killed she was involved in an assault against her a man had basically jumped her they got into some sort of altercation and started full-on beating the crap out of her and then more people jumped in there was like a whole ring of people watching um, it was actually caught on video and that's how so many people ended up finding out about it and it gained such traction with the media because the entire thing was captured on video. I'm not going to insert it in here just because personally for me it's disturbing to watch but you can see the man who was attacking her and there is literally just a ring of people around like a street performer kind of ring of people just like watching doing nothing. And then it was recorded so they did end up finding this man his name was edward thomas but the police ruled that the assault and the murder were not connected in any way and they had no reason to believe that edward thomas was involved in her death or any of the deaths of the other transgender women being killed this was also not classified as a hate crime and um the reason why none of these are classified as hate crime crimes because under the city of dallas your gender identification does not fall under like the hate crime protocol. So if you are killed and you're transgender, like they cannot classify it as a hate crime in Dallas. The only way that it can be written up like that is if it is brought to like the federal attention and then it can be written up as a hate crime and they can possibly get a larger sentence to whoever they're trying to convict because it is a hate crime. So that is why none of these are written up as hate crimes, which I just think is ridiculous. I think that needs to be changed. So this doesn't really affect the case at all, but I really wanted to add it because I thought it was a really, really powerful thing. Malaysia's mom actually said at her funeral that she was so extremely proud of herself and the way that she identified and just her life in general and that she would have done anything to be able to live her life as her true self, including giving her life for that. And her mom said that she actually came to peace with the fact that she was murdered because she knew that Malaysia died of something that she was proud of. And I just think that that is really noble of not only her mother, but of Malaysia, that she was so unconditionally proud of herself and of the way that she was and who she was. So then on June 1st, another black transgender woman was found. Her body was found in White Rock Lake where Nicole Hall's body was found. She was identified as 22 year old Shanal Lindsay and her body showed obvious signs of homicidal violence but I could not find any police reports or articles saying the cause of death. She was found only two weeks after Brooker was found and less than a mile from the site that Brooker's car was found. So this case is when the Dallas police decided that they needed more help and they contacted the FBI to help them with these cases. They were starting to connect them and see that a lot of them had similarities. The bodies had been found in the same places. There were the same rules regarded to the women. They were all black transgender women. So they did contact the police after this body was found. So then on June 5th, only four days after Lindsay's body has been found, Kendall LeVar Lyles was arrested and charged with the murder of Malaysia Brooker. He was a suspect in two other murders. Um, there is misinformation on this i have seen some sites that have said the two other murders that he was being and that he was suspects in were transgender women i saw some of them that said they were not so i'm not quite sure um and he was also a person of interest in lindsay's murder he drove a light colored lincoln ls which is how the police actually found him the day that brooker was killed she was seen going into a car with a man of that similar description and there had also been two other transgender women who had went missing um 
who were seen either getting into a car or letting a stranger get into their car with them. His cell phone records also showed that he was in the same area that Brooker was when she was murdered, which placed him at the scene of the crime. So that is all of the information that I could find on Kendall Lair Lyles. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. But I searched for a trial date, whether or not he was being held, whether or not he got put up for bail, whether or not he was being charged for more murders than just Brooker's, and I could not find anything, literally anything. It was like as soon as he was arrested, past I'd say like June 6th or 7th, there was nothing literally nothing on this case which to me is frightening i understand that these things take time and trials take a ton of time but i don't know just the fact that like you cannot find i mean i guess on the internet i'm sure if i kept digging there would be a way to find it maybe i'm just not smart enough to find it or not like computer savvy enough or i don't know the right places to look but the fact that like you don't know whether or not he is going to go to trial or if they're going to give him a trial and I also feel like he should be investigated for all of the murders and the assaults that were talked about in this video just because they all do show similarities. They either had the same ruse or they were found in the same dump site. All of them were either, I believe they were all shot except for the una unidentified victims that were strangled but again like some of their bodies were too badly decomposed that they're they didn't have like a direct cause of death but i feel like he should be charged or at least looked into for all of these cases and i know there are more cases regarding transgender women being killed in dallas and i think it's baffling that there's not that much information on them i do understand that they are pretty re recent when i was researching this um, I literally felt like I was in criminal minds because you can see the patterns of them and it's mind-boggling how close they are together. I mean, there was an assault in April. No, a death in April, a death in May, and a death in June. And that was just the ones that are, like, all connected. But there was three, three days before Brooker was found, there was another transgender woman found and it just blows my mind how many people this man possibly killed which i i understand that he's not being tried for all of these but i definitely think that there is a connection and the police obviously do they said publicly that they were looking into him for other crimes and things like that that is all i have i guess for this video i feel like that's like a really unsatisfying ending especially since there wasn't a ton of information and there was an arrest made, but there's no, like, certainty about the case. Do you guys know what I mean? I'm also going to have ways to help. There are a couple information sources that I found that if you have information on some of these cases that you can call or email. And I will have all of those listed below. I also have some petitions for um, LGBT rights, trans rights, black trans rights, um, everything like that. So look in my description box if you want to have more ways to help really really easy ways signing a petition takes two seconds i will also have my tamar rice case linked below if you want to check that out there's also a petition in that description that you can sign to reopen his case and i will have my true crime playlist linked below um but i guess that's all i have for you guys i'm sorry i feel like that was not a satisfying ending if you guys have any other information that i might have missed on any of these cases or on the guy charged for it please leave them below i would love to hear what you guys know about it or any other cases that you would like me to cover but with that being said, um, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are staying safe, whether you are protesting or just staying inside due to the virus. I hope you guys all have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.